In this demonstration, we're going to go through the process of analyzing a subassembly of the AMF dough mixer. In this case, we're going to use the hydraulic bowl drive. We'll open that up, and we're going to look at the scenario of the mounting plate being locked and a load of being applied to the clevis. So to do this, we'll start by going to our Applications FEMAP menu. The direct interface between Solid Edge and FEMAP associates not only the geometry, but the material properties assigned to parts in Solid Edge. In FEMAP, we can select and highlight the different parts of the assembly in the Model Info window. In addition, I can select the material that came over from Solid Edge, and in the Entity Editor window, I can view and edit those attributes of those materials. Using FEMAP selector tools, I'll set my object type to surfaces and turn on my multiple select option. Rotate my view around and I'll zoom in. I'll select my surface, bottom surface of that clevis, and in my model info window, I can highlight that selection and using a context sensitive menu, apply a load to that surface. In this case, we'll call it load set one, and we're gonna apply a load normal to the surface of minus 2,500 pounds. To aid in future selection, I'm gonna turn on view transparency and now select the holes where the mounting plane is, is mounted. You can see that the cursor uh, highlights the nearest surface to aid in the selection. And in addition, once I have my selection list built, I could click on that and highlight that to confirm it. Again, using the context sensitive menu, I'm now gonna create a constraint and a constraint set that's fixing those holes on the bottom of the plate. I'll clear off my selection again and refresh my display. Since I'm interested in performing a contact analysis of this assembly, I'm going to use the new automatic connection detection capabilities of FEMAP 2. I just simply select my geometry in the model info window, create an automatic connection, use the defaults that FEMAP creates, including a glued contact connection. This allows me to more rapidly model complex assembly contact problems and utilize the NX Nastran linear and glued contact capabilities. So you can see in my model info window, I now have contact properties, regions, and connectors. I'm now ready to mesh the part. So again, select my geometry, say tet mesh. Going to change my mesh sizes. I'm going to change my tet growth ratio, make it one to one internally in the solid. I'm going to make a slightly coarser mesh just because I want this simulation to run a bit faster. I'll hit OK and hit OK again to start meshing the part. Okay, I'm getting feedback as to the mesh quality, and I now have about 38,000 nodes and 23,000 elements. I'm going to turn off my surfaces and my connection region, and we can see here's our mesh on the part. If I want, I can turn on something called filled edges so we can actually see the edges of the elements, but I'll toggle that off again. I'm now ready to analyze the assembly. To start the analysis, I'll go to my Analysis Set Manager in the Model Info window. Create a new analysis set. We'll call this Glued Contact. And we'll hit OK. When I press the Analyze button, FEMAP will start NX Nastran and open up something called an Analysis Manager window or Analysis Monitor window. This analysis monitor window gives me important feedback on the progress of my simulation with NX Nastran.
Now that my analysis has been completed, the results are automatically read into FEMAP and I'm ready to start displaying those results. Now let's review the results. Go to my context sensitive menu, select post data, and say I want to display the solid von Mises stress. My post toolbar, I'll select contour views, and you can see that my maximum stress is about 4600 psi. I can, I can display deformed shape, and by going to my settings, I could change from an actual deformation of a scale about 100 to 1 to a scale deformation on the screen. I can also animate that display and change the animation parameters. In this case, what I'd like to do is just show the loading of it in a positive direction and also to do the animation of the contours. I can also save these results as an AVI file. Let's take a couple other views of this. I'm going to turn on something called a dynamic cutting plane where I can walk through my model on a user specified cutting plane. I can also do something called a dynamic isosurface which are areas of constant stress. So for example if I'm interested in areas where I've got a thousand PSI I just type in the value and it'll show me all the areas on this assembly where it's a thousand PSI. As a final step what I would like to do is turn on something called the data table. And what the data table allows me to do is add and sort information from within FEMAP. So the information I want to supply in this case is my output summary. So I'll select all of my output sets, in this case only one, and now what I have is the ability to do a sorted table of all this information. For an example, in this case, it'll say that the solid von Mises stress, it gives me the, the ID, the element ID where the minimum stress is, and the element ID of the maximum stress. This concludes our demonstration of analyzing an assembly from SolidEdge in FEMAP.